He's an NFL wideout with a Hollywood smile, yet Heinz Ward isn't afraid to put that pretty mug right in harm's way. In fact, toughness might just be his calling card. Considered one of the NFL's best blocking receivers, which goes over very well in a town like Pittsburgh. A year ago, Ward's full complement of skills were on display in Super Bowl 40 as he earned MVP honors. Jeremy Schaap explains how Ward parlayed that notoriety into becoming an agent of change half a world away on an emotional journey home. The Pittsburgh Steelers are Super Bowl champions. After he was named the MVP of Super Bowl 40, Heinz Ward spoke of how he had always been an underdog. Never in my wildest imagination would a kid out of Forest Park, Georgia, not too tall, not too fast, win the Super Bowl MVP. Speechless. But when Ward came into this world, he was more than an underdog. He was an outcast. Ward was born in 1976 in Seoul, South Korea, to a Korean mother and an African-American father serving in the U.S. Army. In Korea, children of mixed ethnicity have long been pariahs, shunned by mainstream society. As a result, biracial Koreans are often poorer and less educated than pure-blooded Koreans. The women who bear these children are also subjected to harsh intolerance. When my mom walked out in Korea, people would call her names, spit on her. I mean, that's how bad, you know, in Korea it is. My mom always described me, they treat people like dogs over there. It's still a very pure-blooded culture, which goes way back in their history before the Korean War. Janet Mincer runs an organization dedicated to alleviating the impact of discrimination in Korea and around the world. It goes back to Confucian times, and then also the result of invasions of Japan when there were mixed-blooded children, which they resented at the time. If you're not pure-blooded Korean, you face discrimination. Before Ward turned two years old, his parents relocated to Georgia in large part because his mother wanted to escape the prejudices of Korea. She knew the lifestyle that I would have would be harder in Korea rather than coming to, to the States and, and, and giving me an opportunity to have a better life. You know, I could be one of those kids over there right now, you know, not given opportunities, and I owe her everything for that. Not long after they came to the U.S., Ward's parents divorced and Heinz eventually fell out of touch with his father. Throughout his childhood, Ward found himself an outsider. Going to school, black kids teased me because I was Korean, so it was hard to try to fit in with black kids because they always made fun of my Korean side. Well, trying to hang out with the Korean kids, they always teased me because I was black, you know. Trying to hang out with white kids, they teased me because I was black and Korean. The taunts and the knowledge that some of his mother's family had shunned both her and him instilled in Ward a resentment of Korea and his own Korean identity. It was something I was ashamed of for a long time. I mean, I really didn't care for it. Um, I really despised it. I mean, it was like, well, the hell with Korean people. They didn't accept me, they didn't accept my mom. I had that anger for the longest time. The first to war. Can he break the tackle? Oh, my God! Wow. For an outcast in two worlds, the playing fields were a natural escape. During Ward's four years at Georgia and his first eight seasons with the Steelers, performance mattered more than ethnicity. In Super Bowl 40, he struck a blow against those who had mistreated him and his mother. Touchdown, Before the 2005 season, Ward and his mother, who was unavailable to be interviewed for this story, made a plan to return to Seoul after the season. Despite mixed feelings and trepidations, they hoped the trip would reconnect them with their roots. After Ward's MVP performance in the Super Bowl, the trip took on a different dimension. 
as the nation that had once ostracized them now celebrated them. I felt like a king. I mean, it was crazy. We'd get off the airplane and they got military guards and the media people and, you know, everywhere we went, it was, you know, like I got media coverage here and stuff, but, I mean, we, you remember the Tiger Woods when all the crowd was walking behind him? Well, multiply that times 10. That's how it was when we went. It was kind of crazy. Everywhere we went, it was an entourage of people. Ward and his mother were treated like royalty, showered with gifts, lodged in presidential suites, praised in print and on TV. There were elderly Korean people applauding me and my mom for the elderly people in Korea to come out and, and applaud and, 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 and say how much they really respect my mom and, and so proud of it. That, that was a good feeling for me deep down inside. But Ward's trip to the nation of his birth was more than a homecoming. It was also a mission. While visiting with a group of biracial children, children like him, he announced that he would create a foundation dedicated to the advancement of Koreans of mixed ethnicity. People can accept me for who I am, being Korean, that it, rather than what I am as a biracial athlete, um, then I know there's hope for the biracial kids here in Korea. We can shed a light and help move forward in the future. That's why, you know, we're starting up foundations, my mom and I, just to go back and help biracial kids because there might be a next Heinz Ward that's waiting in Korea, but they're never given the opportunity because of the way society views biracial kids over there. Lots of guys on the teams, we have our charities, we have our things we, we like to reach out and do. And we're trying to affect a small group. And here's Hines, he's trying to help a couple thousand kids in an entire country sort of change its way of thinking. In Seoul, Ward threw out the first pitch at a baseball game. He toured the Royal Palace. He was made an honorary citizen of the city in an emotional ceremony. Having finally been embraced by Korean society, he now embraced his own Korean heritage. I used to be ashamed to say I was Korean, but today I just want to thank you guys because I apologize to you for, for being ashamed to say I was Korean. Ward's presence in South Korea this past April led to newspaper editorials calling for change in how biracial people were treated. And there were also even discussions in the South Korean government to pass laws that would make it illegal to discriminate against people of mixed blood relations.